So what is the quickest way to increase test levels? So go to your local gym, go to the locker room, find the local juice head, probably posing in the mirror or something, and ask for some test. Uh, what, what, you mean naturally increase your test? Like, what are you, soft? <laughs> no, but all that bro stuff aside, um, higher test levels are going to give you generally just a better life, you know, your mood and your energy levels and your even, like, risk tolerance is all increased with higher test levels, your training progress, all of the above, right? It's not all about just being, like, big and angry. <laughs> like, you get these NPC guys who are, like, juice heads with tattoos with, like, a leased car and they're just chronically angry. And emotional it's like uh, what <laughs> my name's Shay I'm a nutritionist and an international level athlete and we'll divide this into a few parts I first want to target a few lifestyle factors because although diet does have a role here I think nailing in the lifestyle factors is probably the big hitters so let's make it start lifestyle is always very key because I think what people don't really realize with testosterone it's not like certain precise habits that are gonna boost it crazily. It's kind of just a feedback loop for you being in good health most of the time. There are some things that you can do, but on the whole, just living a healthy life means higher test in general. But yeah, we'll, we'll get into things. As far as the dietary stuff, you know, if you're getting enough of like a certain nutrient, um, getting more of it won't actually increase it further. It's not linear like that. It'd be like that guy pouring water on himself, but he's in the pool. Uh, hello. I really believe that a lot of these lifestyle factors are linked closely with sleep quality. If your sleep quality is terrible, it's going to drop your test levels faster than you can, I don't know, harass a guy who's making a bicep curl only mo montage, like, why are you here? So three quick points for sleep. Make sure your sleep and wake time is somewhat similar. Even on days I don't have to be up early, I'll still set like a safety alarm so I don't oversleep. Number two would be distance your last meal from bedtime. <laughs> Homie Brian Johnson. Uh, the health guru has his di <laughs> dinner at 11 a.m., which is pretty funny. I've gotten it down to 4 p.m., and that was pretty good. Um, I don't go 4 p.m. anymore, but yeah, it helps because it prepares your body to actually sleep. You're not trying to digest, you're actually just trying to sleep, and so your heart rate's going to be lower right before you go to bed, which is pretty indicative of quality sleep. And lastly, is alcohol. Yes, we know it crashes sleep, it also crashes tests. It's like taking an axe to le sac. It's like, why is my test low? Hello? Like, if you fall asleep fine after a few beers, that doesn't mean your sleep's gonna be good, because although you might actually be sleeping, the sleep quality is gonna be terrible. I mean, I can rag on so much about alcohol, but man, it really is probably the best lifestyle choice you can make just to avoid it, <laughs> or at least reduce it. My next point here is don't get AIDS. Moving on, if you're enjoying, please be sure to drop a like and consider subscribing. It's free, helps me out, and boosts your test. Next up, as far as the exercise go, I'm not going to bang on about the fact that you should exercise. If you're on this channel, you're probably exercising, and regardless, almost regardless of what you're training for, uh, I think heavy compound lifts should have a place in your training. For one, just for the strength benefits, but also testosterone levels, the hormonal response you'll get from all this neural activation and muscle contraction from working like large and multiple big muscle groups at the same time that you'll get with these compound movements, ideally with legs because, you know, unless you're doing something is severely wrong, <laughs> like like these boys here, um, you should have a lot more muscle in your legs and your upper body, right? This is the way we were made. <laughs> so rep in some squats and deadlifts, if you can do so safely at a good amount of weight. Um, those are, I guess, the two big basic lower body movements. Now, part two, some of these actual nutrients and what they're actually doing for your test level. So, as far as vitamin C goes, <laughs> I found this study, which is interesting. It was looking at only infertile males, so I don't know if this applies to everyone, but they found that lower vitamin C levels meant a lower test, which was interesting. Lower T meant higher aromatase, which converts your test to estrogen, which, of course, if we're trying to improve test, uh, it doesn't help. So, um, check out my, I guess, fruit tail list I did last video. That was lovely. You can't store vitamin C, so get your fruit in daily. I always have like bell peppers in my dinner meal prep. It's just always in there and I don't have to think about it. <laughs> Next is zinc. And again, if you're getting enough, you don't need any more, but uh, zinc is one of the harder micronutrients to get in my opinion. Outside of a few things like oysters and liver, there, there aren't that many like fantastic sources of it. You're just gonna get through like a little bit in a whole range of whole foods. So if your diet is mostly processed foods, you're probably not getting enough. I get a chunk from quinoa and then bits and pieces from other foods. Um, but yeah, generally good diet, good zinc, kind of, yeah, it's that simple. Now B6 is kind of a similar story, just like in smaller amounts in whole foods. Again, I get another fat chunk from quinoa, dude, I'm absolutely quinoa maxed, nothing can stop me. Magnesium as well, similar story, also boost test, 
Um, also getting a bit from quinoa, who would have thought, right? <laughs> Alright, vitamin D is something a bit more interesting. So, vitamin D, probably the hardest micronutrient to get from your diet alone. That's why we rely on the sun so much. Personally, in my diet, which is pretty well-rounded, I only get like 30% of my daily intake from food alone, which isn't that much, really. So, <laughs> you gotta rely on the sun a bit. The nice thing is, compared to like vitamin C, we can actually store a lot of it, which will get us through winter, ideally, when the UV index is a lot lower. If you are afraid of UV light, which is kind of a valid concern, um, salmon and sardines are your best choices. You can actually get enough vitamin D from your diet if you have a good bit of salmon, but you know, supplementing is also pretty safe, particularly over winter and if you live like near the poles, yeah. All right, part three, another few more bits and pieces. Speaking of <laughs> bits and pieces, your Leydig cells, these are the boys within your boys. <laughs> so these actually make your taste and if you're chronically inflamed, okay, uh, this impedes on pretty much everything, including these late cells. So your test levels aren't going to be produced at, you know, the same rate which they should be. So crash calls on inflammation. Inflammatory particles are going to damage your cells, including your late cells. So we can counter this by eating foods that have anti-inflammatories, and then they can hunt down these inflammatory particles. And then your boys get to work again. First big hit here, omega-3s. And... Omega-6s are everywhere, seed oils are everywhere, processed foods are everywhere, so it's important that we get enough omega-3 because an imbalance can mean pro-inflammation. Again, salmons and sardines are pretty OP, but you know, as far as other things that maybe are a little bit cheaper, flax seeds and chia seeds, I go for chia seeds. If there's only one thing you take from this video, get your chia seeds in, dude, like, stop it, or flax seeds or salmon or whatever, but you get, get something. Vitamin E will be in a lot of oils, including seed oils, but don't cook with seed oils because they're pro-inflammatory because they'll break down, they'll release these actual inflammatory particles that we're kind of trying to get rid of, right? But all these health organizations are like, oh, yeah, give me your money, you like seed oil manufacturers, and we'll say it's okay, <laughs> stop it. Use olive oil, and lastly, get the actual physical antioxidants in. So things like berries are really good, pears as well. I talked about a few of those in my fruit tier list, so go check that out. But other than that, I use extra virgin olive oil and turmeric as well. They're pretty good sources. All right, last couple of points here, soy products. I couldn't really find evidence. I think maybe in like extreme high amounts, it might do something, but in smaller amounts, I wouldn't be too scared about it. Lastly, if you want to supplement something, Tomcat at least, probably the only thing that has really valid evidence for it. I personally don't take it because I'm a bit cynical because I don't think all supplements are actually going to have what they marketed towards you. But you're paying like a hundred bucks for a little container of it and it's probably not got anything in it. But if you can find a good source of it, fair enough. Okay, so what does this come down to? So, you know, eat mostly whole foods, um, sleep well, exercise, don't drink alcohol, like... Mm -mm. Who would have thought? <laughs> no, but really a lot of these videos do circle back to this, but I don't really think that's a bad thing. I don't mind just reinforcing that. And I think it's really valuable to actually know why these are important, you know, the actual intricate mechanisms within them. Because if you just heard like, oh, alcohol is bad, but you don't really understand why, it's probably not gonna dissuade you at all from actually drinking, or the same goes for like, uh, bad sleep or whatever but if you actually know what's going on you understand the magnitude it's actually going to enforce you to actually <laughs> make those lifestyle changes because you understand how important it is so for the real big hitters it really adds motivation to really dial these things in and see your life <laughs> improve and you're like your your lady boys get get <laughs> they, they, they get running yeah be yeah, honest with me if you have any other tips leave them down below but yeah uh, there's some more videos there if you enjoyed this one i'll see you next time